On March 30th, 1867, a deal was struck that would dramatically reshape the map of North America. For the price of $7.2 million, the United States purchased Alaska from Russia, more than doubling the size of its territory overnight. At the time, this deal was hugely controversial. Critics blasted it as a massive folly that would burden the still-recovering nation. The country had just gone through the Civil War and was still recovering. Spending money on a faraway, frozen land seemed foolish to a lot of Americans. The purchase was derided as Seward's Folly after Secretary of State William Seward, who brokered the deal with Russia. Many saw the remote, frozen land of Alaska as worthless. Skeptics ridiculed the U.S. for buying an icy wasteland destined to become nothing but a money pit. Even supporters viewed the deal as a risky gamble with an uncertain outcome. Yet, over the coming decades, this purchase would prove monumentally important for the United States. Alaska's immense trove of natural resources, from fur to gold to oil, would enrich the nation many times over. Its strategic position on the Pacific would aid national defense and trade, and its frontier spirit would come to embody the very ethos of American exploration and ingenuity. The deal doubled the size of the country and stoked dreams of a nation spanning the continent. What had seemed a costly folly was in fact a visionary investment in the nation's future. The lands that would become the state of Alaska are vast and varied. At over 665,000 square miles, Alaska accounts for a sixth of all U.S. territory. It stretches from the Pacific Ocean in the south to the Arctic Ocean in the north. This frontier landscape encompasses towering mountain ranges, sprawling tundra, temperate rainforests, and thousands of miles of remote wilderness. Alaska also contains a tremendous bounty of natural resources. Its seas teem with fish and marine mammals. Its forests abound with timber. Beneath the rugged terrain lies a wealth of minerals from gold to copper to the oil that would later fuel a boom. This harsh yet generous land sustained Alaska's indigenous peoples for millennia. When Russian explorers first arrived in Alaska in the 1700s, they encountered a thriving native population, including Inuit, Aleut, Tlingit, and Athabascan groups. The Russians aimed both to convert them to Christianity and reap the profits of the fur trade. Establishing outposts along the coasts, Russia began exploiting Alaska's ample fur, seals, otters, and other animals. By the mid-18th century, hundreds of Russians had settled Alaska. Disease and oppression took a devastating toll on natives, with the Aleut population alone declining from around 25,000 to just 2,000 over 50 years of Russian control. The Russian-American company reigned over Alaska by the early 1800s, extracting furs and sponsoring Orthodox missions. But settler numbers never rose above 800. Isolated and remote, Alaska remained a lonely outpost of the Russian Empire half a world away. By the mid-19th century, Russia's grip on Alaska was weakening. The colony strained Imperial Russia's finances and military capacities, and the lucrative fur trade had severely declined after a century of overhunting. Russia was overextended across two continents and facing unrest in Eastern Europe. Closer to home, Russia was embroiled in the grinding Crimean War against Britain and France. The costs of propping up remote Alaska grew increasingly burdensome, while profits plummeted. Defending Alaska from foreign encroachment also proved difficult. British and American ships freely exploited Alaskan waters, depleting seal and other populations. Russia lacked the naval forces to protect its distant shores while fighting in the Crimea. Moreover, Alaska was becoming surrounded by other powers on the Pacific. As Spain and later Mexico lost control of lands to the south, the coast from California to Canada fell under American or British sway. Isolated Russian Alaska stuck out on the map, vulnerable amidst these rival forces. Facing these challenges, Russia determined that its best option was to entirely divest from North America. Rather than cling to a deteriorating asset, Russia sought to sell Alaska before it was lost. This would provide a return on investment while removing the burdens of governing a remote colony. By 1866, Russia had secretly decided that its Alaskan chapter was coming to a close after a century. The Tsar instructed his ministers to discreetly put Alaska on the market and gauge interest from potential buyers. In the 1860s, the United States was animated by dreams of expansion and manifest destiny. 
Fresh off victories in the Mexican-American War and Indian Wars, America sought to stretch its domains across the continent. Alaska represented the next logical step in securing America's dominion over North America. Territorial ambitions aside, the United States recognized Alaska's inherent value. Its bountiful natural resources could enrich the nation if properly harnessed. American whalers and fur traders were already profiting from Alaskan waters. Securing this territory would ensure American control over these assets. Moreover, buying Alaska provided the U.S. a strategic position close to both Europe and Asia. Its Pacific coastline could facilitate expanded trade with China and Japan. And its proximity to Russia's eastern edge provided a geopolitical foothold near America's rival. There were also fears that if the U.S. did not act, Britain would swoop in to claim Alaska. Preventing further British expansion into North America motivated many expansionists. Ultimately, most Americans welcomed the opportunity to spread their nation from the Atlantic to the Pacific. So, purchasing this big, cold northern area aligned perfectly with what America stood for in the 1800s. The deal matched the country's hunger for discovery, business ventures, and gaining more territory. It was risky, but fit America's view of its own destiny. It seemed Russia was ready to part ways with Alaska. I wonder, would you have taken the gamble if you were in Seward's shoes? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and consider giving this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the story so far. Now let's see how the negotiations played out. In 1867, Russia and the United States moved swiftly to negotiate the sale of Alaska. Representing the U.S. was Secretary of State William H. Seward, a staunch advocate of American expansionism. Seward had long coveted Alaska for its resources and strategic value. Now, with Russia eager to offload the territory, his vision was within reach. Seward quickly found a willing partner in Russia's minister to the U.S., Edward de Stuckel. Steckel had urged Russia to eliminate its North American holdings, seeing them as more trouble than they were worth. He was authorized by the Tsar to arrange Alaska's sale to the highest bidder. In March 1867, Steckel and Seward met secretly in Washington to hammer out a deal. In a series of brief meetings over one week, they reached an agreement for the sale of Alaska for $7.2 million. Considering Alaska's size and resources, this was a bargain price that instantly doubled America's territory. The deal was secured with remarkable speed and minimal negotiations. Both sides recognized it served their interests. For debt-burdened Russia, Alaska had become an expensive liability. For expansionist America, it was a coveted asset. And for the negotiators themselves, transferring Alaska offered personal and professional gains. Perhaps this shared motivation explains the swiftness of the deal. In any case, with the stroke of a pen, the United States radically reshaped the map of North America. Seward had realized his long-held goal of claiming Alaska in the name of America. On October 18, 1867, a ceremony was held to formally transfer control of Alaska from Russia to the United States. In Sitka, the Russian and American flags were raised and lowered as ownership officially changed hands. Despite now belonging to America, the indigenous peoples of Alaska saw little improvement in their treatment. Having faced disease, displacement, and cultural oppression under the Russians, Alaskan natives endured further mistreatment under U.S. rule. Early American administrators abused and swindled native tribes. Alaska's resources were exploited for profit with little regard for native land rights or livelihoods. Many indigenous communities were forcibly displaced and denied full legal protections well into the 20th century. Yet for the United States, the Alaska Purchase proved extraordinarily lucrative. Over the coming decades, settlers and corporations extracted immense wealth from Alaska's natural riches. Copper, gold, and coal mines generated millions in revenues. Fishing, furs, and timber were massively profitable industries. But above all, oil drove Alaska's value. After large petroleum deposits were discovered in the 1960s, Alaska's oil fields produced over 20 billion barrels of oil over 50 years. This fueled America's economy while earning back the purchase cost over a hundredfold. From the Klondike Gold Rush to the black gold of Prudhoe Bay, Alaska's resources enormously enriched its southern neighbor. Both the promise and the peril of Alaska were thus fulfilled. 
The U.S. got major advantages from Alaska that boosted the country, but Native Alaskans faced pain and oppression under American control that continues today. So the purchase fulfilled both the promise and the peril predicted when America first bought Alaska from Russia. The purchase of Alaska in 1867 was undoubtedly risky, opposed by critics, and full of unknowns. However, it proved greatly beneficial for the United States despite the uncertainty. While deemed Seward's folly, the deal secured an abundance of natural resources that enriched the country for generations. Alaska also gained strategic significance for national defense and Pacific trade. Just as importantly, it realized 19th century dreams of an America spanning the continent. Alaska embodied the pioneering spirit that compelled such bold ventures into the unknown. It represented a final frontier, where determined souls could find freedom and fortune if willing to brave the challenges. This mystique endures today in Alaska's identity. The purchase doubled the size of the United States and irrevocably shaped history. It demonstrated the nation's ambition and optimism even when facing daunting odds. By accepting risks and visualizing possibilities, America brought stunning new horizons under its bounds. The legacy of Alaska attests to rewards awaiting beyond the horizon for those who dare to venture. With vision and courage, uncertain gambles can transform the future. As Seward showed in 1867, even deals deemed folly at the time can turn out to be strokes of genius that change the world. Alaska remains a testament to that pioneer faith in possibilities. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching, and consider watching our other videos right here.